Wait, she's your only healer? Tom questioned. Yes, they are a rare breed, young man. The lady replied very apologetically, almost bowing before him. No, don't do that, Tom protested. Your people both suffered and survived, not to mention your son technically saved me and Jackalope. Hopefully Unkai can lend a hand when he gets here then, because she is spent. Tom glanced at the healer, who was still sleeping up against the wall, where she'd been when he woke up. The lady looked like she was going to protest until we reached the last sentence. You brought a healer with you, out here? The lady questioned, clearly not believing him entirely. We did, yes, in case we found wounded, and that we certainly did. I was just hoping we could have Jackie's ears looked at, but I guess that will have to wait. I'm sorry, but we don't have anything else that can help, I'm afraid. I hate not knowing what's going on, Jackalope exclaimed, crossing her arms, looking at the two of them with a distinctly unimpressed expression. I guess I'll be mowing to you for a bit longer. Actually, no, I brought the note block. I'll be just a second, Tom replied, walking, jogging over his backpack, the confused Jackalope following along. You got something I can fix this in here? She questioned, hopefully. She was getting a bit better at keeping the volume down, though she was still rather loud. Then again, that was pretty standard, all things considered. Tom got out the block to begin noting things down for her. We can't fix your ears, not yet at least. Other people need to be looked at first, maybe when we get home. She did seem a little annoyed after reading that, sighing a bit and looking back up at him. So what now? We help clean this place up, take our watch, or just sit back and relax? You two sit back for now. I won't have you risking your lives for our skins and then cleaning up the mess as well. The old granny replied, trying to speak up enough to be heard across the room. Tom certainly didn't have a problem with that. He did not really feel like hard work right now. Jackie was clearly sore and her breathing still wasn't quite right, so he guessed she could use the rest as well. Do you have a place we can stay, or...? Infirmary is full, I'm afraid. We do have some rooms, the old lady replied. Actually, I think we have a big friend in need of a bit of company when he wakes up, Tom replied, looking towards Jarex. We will keep our stuff with us if shit hits the fan. If it does what? Uh, right, um, go south, if bad things start happening. The lady looked at him more than a little confused, but she relented, eventually. Yes, we don't have many people left who could fight. I will bring you something to eat for the blood loss. I don't know if it would help of your kind, but it couldn't hurt. They made their way to Jarex, who was sleeping like a rock. Tom began taking off the very uncomfortable horses and belts. It looked like a fucking joke right now. Goddamn Florida man running around with guns and ammo in his damn underpants. He put down the equipment in nice little piles, rechecking that everything was loaded, if he needed it. He could hear Jackalope getting out of her rump behind him. That stuff wasn't the most comfortable to sleep in, after all. You okay? Jackie asked, in a rather worried tone after a bit. After yesterday, you're... you're not quite the same. Tom turned around to look at her. She was looking at him with an expression of genuine worry. That obvious, huh? Tom thought to himself, shoulders sagging even more. He couldn't even blame her for catching it. His head just wasn't in it right now. Whether that was because of the fighting, the screaming, the blood loss, bodies flying everywhere last night, the fact they weren't quite out of the woods yet, or that the ones back home would soon be getting worried. They were supposed to be back tonight, after all. He didn't even know what time it was, apart from rather early. He was also still tired as fuck, despite just getting up. There was just too much to worry about right now. Look at me, would you? Jackalope demanded, a hint of hurt in her voice. Tom snapped up to look her in the eyes, feeling more than a little ashamed of that. Just like Sapphire said, you worry about everything. You can't not worry. Well, right now, just try not to, okay? It's gonna be fine. Tom did crack a little smile before turning back down on the floor. That was very far from guaranteed. There were still many things which could go wrong. What if this wasn't the only raiding party? What if this Marty Keep was a ruin? What if something had found the kids in the forest? What if Jackalope's ears could be fixed? What if... Jackalope grabbed him by the shoulder, turning him around to face away from her. Then she folded her arms and wings around him, lifted him off his feet, and backed up against Jarex's side. She sat down in the nook of the dragon's armpit and snuggled up against the dragon, while clutching Tom tightly. I'm never gonna have a cold night again, she let out, sounding very content and you're in the safest place in the world. Here you're not allowed to worry about everything. You're in a lockdown keep, sleeping with a dragon. If that doesn't do it, then I will, so relax. Please, dude. That might be the sweetest thing anyone has ever done for me, Tom replied. Not that she could hear it, of course. Well, except for saving my life a few times. People do that a lot, don't you? What did I do to deserve you? He tried to snuggle up a bit closer to her, even if that was hard to achieve in her current grip. Jarex's slow, steady breathing, almost rocking him to sleep. Now, 
I just want to ask you some questions. Nothing more, so don't panic, Micah went, as they turned the guy around. The guy looked scared shitless to Sapphire. He was a rather short, spindly fellow as well, so looked rather unintimidating right about now. And in case you think running is smart, I'm possibly the fastest flyer you have met, and I won't be gentle with my prey, Sapphire added, trying to look menacing and baring her teeth, while Micah was clearly going for the more friendly approach. The guy just swallowed once, looking at the two of them. I was just trying to find out what you're doing. I swear, nothing more. So, what did you learn? Maiko asked, still sounding very friendly. You go to the inventor's place regularly, you're making something weird, you've been to the Hoshaw's place, and you're staying at the Sweet Dragon. And who are you supposed to give all this lovely information? Maiko continued. I was just paid with some woman. I didn't know her, I swear. She just asked if I wanted to make a bit of easy money. Sapphire opened her mouth a bit, letting out a deep growl. The guy was fidgeting nervously at that as Dakota, Balathon and Junior trooped up behind him. I'm guessing rather fine clothes and perhaps some rather nice jewellery, Dakota asked, causing the guy to go stiff. I mean, yeah, she did look rather rich. How are you supposed to let her know? I should meet her at the big plaza in front of the trading guild tomorrow after breakfast. Right, well first off that's not going to happen, Dakota went from behind him. Secondly, if we catch you following us again... Unless Sapphire here demonstrate why she isn't even allowed to compete in the archery competitions. Am I clear? Her voice was cold and calculating. The guy nodding rapidly. Out of curiosity. What did she pay you? Fifteen silver. Well, for telling so on, that was a rather good pay. The guy didn't exactly look well off either, so Sapphire could see him taking that offer without a second thought. Actually, I think I might have a better idea. Sapphire interrupted. What would we like them to know? Dakota looked to Sapphire. Her face turning into an evil grin. What do you say, Maiko? I mean, if this guy doesn't want to go to jail for disturbing the peace in spite of military matters, he might be useful. Sapphire was pretty sure you could not go to jail for that, nor was this military matter in any capacity. So what do you say? Bring to them the royal guard and a few people in high standing with the king at hand? Or do I need to get some manacles? Maiko questioned, looking down at the guy. Trebalorian at your service, sir. The man responded, eyes wide as the situation he found himself in seemingly hit him like a battering ram. Come with us then. We have some things to discuss, Dakota went, nodding to the others. They took the guy back to the workshop where Tink was currently busy repairing the damage to the magnet. Back so soon? Yeah, we found a nosy little bastard. Had you brought him here? Tink questioned, clearly not happy with that. Yes, we did. Now, Terorian, may I call you Trerol? Dakota questioned, turning to the man. Yes, ma'am, of course, he responded eagerly. God damn, he's scared, Sapphire mused to herself. They weren't going to hurt the dude unless they had to, but it was probably best he didn't know that. As you can see, we are making very dangerous new weapons here, under the authority of the king, no less. Tink looked ready to protest when Junior kicked him in the shin, shutting him up. Have you heard of the attacks on the outlying keeps? Trevor nodded, looking around the room worriedly at all the strange bits and bobs. We are looking to put an end to that once and for all. Now the reason I'm showing you all this is because if you tell anyone, that is treason. And you know what that means. Oh, you evil genius, Sapphire thought to herself, doing a gesture of terror, falling a long way down, convincing sounds included. The guy went even paler than before. So what I want you to do is tell the sweet lady who hired you that we are making some kind of invention as a present for the king himself, and that it looks very expensive and very complicated, so you can't possibly figure out what it is. But you did manage to sneak in while we were out and read a very official looking document stating who had hired us and that the present is expected to be done in time for... Anyone know when there is some sort of big event coming up with the royal family? Dakota questioned, looking around. One of the princes is graduating from the academy this summer, I think, Micah responded. That will do. A present for the prince in time for his graduation. Can you do that? Sure can, don't you worry. I ain't no traitor. Very good. Now remember, if you tell her the truth... There's a long way down, okay? A very long way indeed, Sapphire added, with as much venom in her voice as she could manage. Trerol just nodded furiously. Good lad. Now run along now, you have work to do, Dakota continued, letting go of him. Trerol stormed out the door, Junior going over to close it after him. They all stood there for a second before everyone except Tink broke out laughing. You're all crazy, the inventor finally went in a disapproving tone, which only caused Sapphire to laugh even harder. When Tom woke up again, he was greeted by a dragon's head lying on the ground in front of him, staring at him with a sly smile. Someone got comfortable, 
Jerry's question, sounding very pleased with himself. You're just jealous. No one is big enough to wrap you up like this. To reply from his prison of safety. What time is it? Hmm, no clue. It's getting late though. They brought you something because you decided to spray blood everywhere. Oh, and your clothes. The girl tried to apologise for not being able to get them properly clean. That took a bit of explaining. Tom chuckled at that. I'm sure it did. Wait, did they use you as a washing line? It looked wet, so why not? Jarris responded. Tom cracked a proper smile at that. The world's most expensive washing assistant. Yeah, not exactly the world's best night fighter, that's for sure. Jarris let out with a sigh. I have never had my ass whooped that hard before. Hey, you don't get to feel sorry about that. You killed all three of those big bastards. And no one seems to know what they were. I never thought I would need to tell you this, but be a little proud of that. Jarek did perk up a bit of that. Not much, though. I only got two, and the last one would have gotten me, I think. But I did tell you, you would be a great at getting things on my back, hey? Even if that was not quite how I intended it. Can't argue with that. By the way, have your decades of training to become a perfect killing machine told you what they might be? No, I got nothing. Definitely a foul thing. You must have been able to see me approach to land that hit. Yeah, if it sees like a bat, then that thing sees using sound. Wait, what? Jarvis questioned. Can't they just see well in the dark? Nope, they use their ears. There was no ordinary bat, though, that is for damn sure. No, it was not. I've been thinking. My father said the darklings had a ride they kept falling back to when they attacked him. Do you think we just found what it was? Tom had to think about that for a bit. Fuck, it might be. Is that bad? Yes, very. That means I have a new way of travelling long distances. That's never good. Tom felt Jackalope begin to stir as Jarek's talking jostled the two of them around a bit. No, Tom, you're not leaving yet. This is nice. She let out, still half asleep, squeezing Tom tighter. I think for the time being we need not worry. We just kill three of them, there can't be any more around, or they will be everywhere. Jarek looked rather curiously at their arrangement. Shouldn't we worry? This could be very bad, we can't just sit here. Not much to do except let the people who can do something about it know. We were supposed to scout, not fight, so let's just worry about that and the kids for now. Besides, you aren't going anywhere in a hurry, right? Jarek stood rather ashamed as he craned his head to look at his own back. Expression turned pained. No, I am not. Well then, neither am I, neither is Jackie. Unkai is needed here, and we aren't sending Zarko alone. Even if Jackie or Unkai could find their way back to the keep. Actually, Jackie is deaf, so that would be kind of hard, and Unkai might not even know. Well, that settles it then. We aren't going anywhere till you can fly again. Maybe we can get some of these nice people to fly the message. We were sent by the king, remember? I mean, maybe. Perhaps at some point. Are my clothes dry yet? They don't feel cold anymore, so I guess so. Thomas squirmed a bit to try and get free, but Jackalo simply squeezed tighter. Jack suppressed a snicker. Uh, I guess that's nice to know. Jackie, I know you're awake. God damn it. Dom tried. Jarek's starting to giggle properly. She's got you now. Well, if you didn't want me to leave, I don't think I could either. Tom retorted, looking up at the dragon. All joking aside, you did fucking amazing out there. I'm just sorry I couldn't nail that bus on your back sooner. That hurt like hell. Also, don't tell her, but I think Jackalope shot me. Jarex, how about his lead for a dragon? Tom questioned. Don't tell me they need to dig it out. I mean, they don't need to, but it's in there now. It's made from copper and lead. Jarex looked over all the wounds strewn over him. The Dragoness had done a good job of patching most of them up, though several of the bandages were leaking fresh blood. I think it'll stay in. The healing will be done for ten times over trying to fix that mess, I guess. So much for looking like a million gold. Jack seemed genuinely distraught at that. Hey, think of it this way. You're the first dragon ever to be shot with a gun. Have you ever heard the expression knight in shining armor, by the way? Yeah, like some young prince who everyone wants. Well, would you look at that. A metaphor that transcends worlds. It actually means a man who has yet to be tested. That's why his armor is shiny, he hasn't seen battle yet. Could he just get it fixed and polished? Maybe, but his armor will still carry scars of battle and most will leave them undisturbed as marks of experience. Just like you will now. Congratulations, you've been tested and you sure as fuck weren't found wanting, you magnificent bastard. Does that mean I passed a lesson? Jarris questioned, seemingly very excited all of a sudden. With flying colors, pun intended. Not that I doubted you could fight. Tom Jones, cracking a smile. There are more to go though. And remember, Chick's dick's cards. Why do I want to impress a young chicken? I guess that one doesn't translate. Girls, Jarex. Girls love scars. Well, some of them at least. Ah, oh, that makes more sense. My back is going to look wicked in that case. Eventually. Just think of Baron. He looked badass, didn't he? 
Sure, but most of those are from epic battles in the history books. He's so freaking cool. I was told stories about him and the other veterans growing up. You don't think this one is going in there? It's just some battle for a key, but that happens all the time. Well, that is a rather depressing thought. Tom hadn't gotten that impression for the others, though. I don't think you're right. Didn't you say you had no clue what those bad things were? The first one is always remembered. You might be the first to ever kill one and the first to win a battle against them. First are always remembered. Jack seemed to ponder that for a second before he lit up. You mean I'm going to be in the history books for this? He replied with genuine excitement in his voice. Well, it's possible, don't you think? But besides, if that doesn't cut it, being the first dragon to carry a gun should damn well do the trick. You didn't even think of that? I just wanted to win. Bravo, that's how it's done. Tom was actually genuinely surprised by that, and really rather happy. It was clear this mattered to Jarex. Tom guessed he had been used to big battles with colourful depictions of heroes and their deeds. You need to win no matter what, because history is written by the victor. I'm willing to bet that most of those stories you have heard aren't really true. War is always a shit show, but if you win, you can claim it wasn't. That is rather depressing, Jarex responded. You remember what I said a while ago? Glory is your reward for doing terrible deeds, not to mention going through hell, hopefully for a good cause. We did that yesterday. That was all for a good cause, and that can't be taken from you. So again, congratulations, big blue hero. Well, at what point are the two little heroes going to move? I haven't moved a muscle for an hour, fearing I might squash you. You are going to have to take that one up with Jackalope, Tom replied. He didn't really want to get up. He was perfectly comfortable here. Even if he was wondering how Jackalope wasn't uncomfortable, he was literally sitting on a lap and had been for hours by now. He should probably eat whatever was in that bowl, too. It didn't look particularly appetizing, though. Why haven't we heard anything yet? Balathon questioned, between bites of dinner. Don't know. Might have stayed a little at Dereva? I would. It's not often we get to see them, and the lady there is very kind. Sapphire replied in a hopeful tone. She was not sure she believed that, though. They have Jarrus with them. He could outrun almost anything, Micah replied. If it was bad news, we would have heard from them by now. Like this morning, actually. Unless they were dumb enough to try and help, the Dakota added in, sounding worried. I mean, Zarko follows orders. Unkai would likely be too scared. They won't listen to Jackie, so that puts it down to Tom and Jarex, Sapphire replied, thinking that over for a second. Would Tom risk it? I have no idea. The Nook said he sounded troubled at the notion of even leaving the keep, but damn it if he is one to look the other way, the Dakota answered again before looking to Maiko. What about Jarex? Oh, it would for sure. But isn't that what Tom had been trying to teach him not to do? Besides, I think he would listen to Zarko on that front. That and his orders to follow, from the king no less. Maiko certainly didn't seem worried. Tom won't give a shit about those orders though, Sapphire stated plainly, scoring a double take from Maiko. But he might decide to play hero, and with Jackie along, and Jack is possibly looking for an excuse. Fuck, they might actually do it, Sapphire concluded to herself, as she looked around at the others. What would we do if they tried to help? Not much we can do, we're stuck here for the time being. Dakota replied, looking like she had already arrived at Sapphire's conclusion. Well, if they don't return, we'll be launching an investigative force, Micah replied, clearly not pleased with that notion. If they engage, though, there is a good chance they are licking their wounds. I wouldn't be concerned yet. As I said, Jarex is down near the fastest flyer around these days, if you don't need to go too far. So they saw a keep in trouble, lent a hand, then ran away to lick their wounds. Or they went in, won the battle, and are celebrating merrily with the people they saved. Sounds good to me. As long as too many didn't get hurt, Balathon added, mouth half full of food. How long till he send someone to mop up what's left? Oh, I don't know. A few days, maybe a week, Michael replied dismissively. I say we worry about it then, hey? Besides, as you said, we can't do anything about it, Balathon continued, while still eating. I think we need to be more concerned with the people who might just be trying to kill us. Sapphire didn't really like this. Most of the situations they talked about, people would likely get hurt, and it might well be someone she cared about. Tom was a good friend, sure, but she had known Jackalo for many years. She might be her closest friend, in fact, despite their rivalry. They better be fine. I've been doing too much praying as of late, and it doesn't seem to be working. I think it's about time it does. Isn't that something to do with only praying when you need something? Balathon questioned. Well, what should I pray for, then? That someone got hurt or worse? Sapphire replied in a rather annoyed tone. I think you need to give thanks for what you've got. Not done much praying, though, he responded. Okay, so... Dear Lotek, thank you for our safe journey here. Would you please ask Ishan not to take my friend from me? Don't say things like that. Everyone is fine, I'm sure, the goddess demanded, sounding like she needed to convince herself just as much as the others. Besides, even if they did decide to help a keep, 
They're both Tom and a damn dragon of the Royal Guard. What exactly survives that? She didn't sound entirely convinced of that statement either, though. Even if it was one hell of an argument. Sorry, I'm just worried, okay? Sapphire apologised. Let's just give a prayer for everyone to get home safe tonight, and then worry about the things we can do something about. Michael interjected, clearly trying to ease things a bit. When they had made it to bed, Dakota had a chat with Anouk about what had happened, even if there wasn't much to report beyond Tremor. Crucially though, no news for the keep. Everything was as it should be, apart from no jokes and crew. Do you think this Trevor guy gonna stab us in the back? Sapphire questioned, after giving Dakota a second to catch her breath after the experience. I think he's too scared to try and double cross us. He wants to live. That was damn clever of Maiko, I damn near believed it myself. Yeah, the guy has a knack for this kind of thing it seems. I'm starting to see why Hashor sent him. Besides, just not wanting him around. And it was brilliant about the weapons, even if Trevor does betray us, the bitch is going to be scared shitless anyway. She sure is, Dakota replied, with an evil grin.